Yes. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to present my research today. So in this talk, we want to construct a system of differential operators uh, that, uh, whose common solution space is conformally, ah, uh, sorry, uh, whose solution, uh, common solution space is invariant under a algebra action. Then first, let's take a look at a very classical example for the wave operator. So we have, oops, so we have R to the six with pseudo-Hermannian metric with a uh, signature four plus and two minus, and we have the corresponding orthogonal group. Then we have an embedding of R to the four inside R to the six by this way. Then the action of the orthogonal group on R to the six induces a meromorphic action LG on R to the four. Then for any complex number S, the orthogonal group acts on the space of smooth functions on R to the four by the multiplier representation rho sub s. Then the fact that I want to emphasize is that for exactly one complex parameter s, the solution space of the wave operator is invariant under the multiplier action. And this is what we want to generalize. Then to do so, we need to revisit this example. Let's see. So first, we have the orthogonal group, and we have a parabolic subgroup with wavy decomposition. Then indeed, the R to the four is diffeomorphic to n bar, which is the opposite new radical. Then this is open and dense in the homogeneous space G mark Q. Then the multiplier representation that we have been talking about is the left translation of G on the space of global smooth sections on the line bundle L sub S over G mod Q. Then let's denote by the capital S sub uh, pi sub S, the infinitesimal, uh, infinitesimal action of the left translation. Then the infinitesimal version of the invariance is for any x in G, the real algebra G, the commutator of pi sub two of x and the wave operator is a product of a smooth function and the wave operator. Then this is the equality that we want to generalize. Then recently, Barcini, Cable, Zero, generalized this equality to a system of differential operators and they call the system of differential operators a conformally invariant system. Then in this talk, I will introduce a definition in a concrete setup. So here is the setup. So let G be a simple real B group, and Q be a parabolic subgroup. Then we have the homogeneous space G over Q. Then this chi to the s, c sub chi to the s is a one dimensional representation of L with complex parameter s. And by making n act trivially on this space, we consider this space is a Q representation. Then this L sub s is the homogeneous line bundle with fiber c sub chi to the s. And C infinity of G mod Q, L sub S is the space of smooth global sections. Then we group G acts on this space by left translation. Then the point is, oops, the orbit n bar of E dot Q is open in G mod Q. So we work with the restrictions of the smooth sections into n bar. And the left translation of Lie group G induces the infinitesimal action of the algebra G on this space. Then this action is given by this formula. Here, D chi is the differential of the character chi. Then this R is the infinitesimal right translation of the algebra G. Then this dot just denotes the action of the differential operator. Then from this formula, one can see that this action 
can be extended to the whole space of smooth functions on n bar. Then now we are ready for the definition of a conformal invariant system. So a list of differential operators d1 through dn on the space of smooth functions on n bar is said to be a conformally invariant system. If for each x in g, there are smooth functions on n bar so that the commutator of pi sub s of x and a differential operator is the linear combination of the differential operators with smooth function coefficient. So for the rest of this talk, we mean by conformal <laughs> invariance that a given system of differential operators satisfy this equality. Then the next question is how can one, uh, how one can construct such a system of differential operators? Then we use some techniques on pre-homogeneous vector spaces. So can I ask? Yes. How does it correspond to my definition of symmetry? If one of these operators is a Laplace, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, um, so basically, so first of all, we have this example in the, for the classical wave operator, and then we found that for this classical case, oops, the solution space, so the solution of the wave operator, so let's see, so G acts on, oh, so how can I say? So G acts on the space of solu uh, solution of the wave operator when S equals two. And then just uh, we want to generalize the infinitesimal version of this fact. So I'm probably, I'm really not sure how um, this notion of conformal invariance is related to the Mike's um, ideas of conformal invariance, I guess. Yes, right. Yes, so constant found, yes, um, this fact, yes. But he has this one operator of putting up. Yes, he just has one operator. But he's got many. Yes, he's got many in this box. So I've got several operators here. He just has one operator. You can try and absorb the machine, the function C, into having a different operator. So then you go between a line bundle and another line bundle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, but, but, uh, yeah. I mean, at the moment you're only specifying what the line bundle is on which the, on which the differential operator rests, not where it's ending up. Yes. Right. G yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. But you could you could try to 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 turn this into a the more standard definition of conformal invariance by having the the d take mm -hmm. uh, values in, in various line bundles. I see. Yes. Right, so.
<laughs> okay, can I? Uh, then can I? <laughs> All right. So anyway, let's make uh, some system of conform a uh, system of differential operators. All right. So I said that we use techniques on pre-homogeneous spectral spaces. So first, we give a Z grading on G. So, um, so some adjoint um, action on certain element in Carlton subalgebra has only um, integer eigen values. So eigen space decomposition of this gives such a Z grading. Then it is well known that the direct sum of eigen spaces of non-negative eigen values is a parabolic subalgebra. Then Leif factor is G of zero and Newton radical is the direct sum of eigen spaces of positive eigen values. And the opposite new radical is a direct sum of the eigen spaces of negative eigen values. Then the fact is that the LC adjoint G of one is a pre-homogeneous vector space. So this means that G of one has an open dense, uh, open dense LC orbit. And it is natural to associate a pre-homogeneous vector space covariant maps tau sub k on G of one. Here, we apply a joint of x for x in g of 1 k times to this special element. Then we take an irreducible LC submodule w that is not orthogonal to tau sub k. Then given basis of w star, which means the dual of w, we define a linear map tau sub k tilde from W star to polynomial algebra of G of one. Then in fact, tau sub k tilde of W star are polynomials on G of one of degree k. So tau sub k tilde is a linear map from W star to the polynomials on G of one of degree k. Then each vector in W star gives a case order differential operator by these algebraic operations. Then we denote by omega sub k of W star, the case order differential operator. Then we call the system of differential operators, the omega k system over L sub s. Then as we have seen in the example for the wave operator, the omega k system is not in general conformal invariant. It depends on the complex parameter s. So the question is, what complex parameter s the omega k system is conformally invariant? Then we'll see some results for this problem. So first of all, Bergini cable zero studied the case that q is a Heisenberg parabolic. Then in this case, we construct first, second, third, and fourth order differential operators. Then for first, second, and fourth order differential operators, the complex parameters S are determined explicitly for which the systems are conformally invariant. On the other hand, for the third order differential operators, first, to obtain conformal invariance, we need to modify the construction a little bit. Then we'll see the modification later in an example. Then with the uh, modification for the exceptional algebras, there, uh, it is shown that there exists the omega-3 system that is conformal invariant over line bundle L sub zero. The S zero is the special value. On the other hand, for classical algebras, the omega-3 system does not exist for type A 
n for n is greater than or equal to 3, bn and cn for all n, and dn for all n greater than or equal to 5. Then the question is, how about a2 and d4 case? Then, yes, question? Then I solved the existence problem for the omega-3 system for those two cases. So if G is SL3C or SOHC and Q is a Heisenberg parabolic, then the omega-3 system does exist for certain complex parameter. Then later on, we'll see an example for this case, G equals SL3C. And I also study the case that Q is a maximal no Heisenberg two-step neopotent parabolic. So here is some result. So if G is a complex simple Lie algebra and Q is a two-step a maximal no Heisenberg two-step neopotent parabolic, then the omega one and omega two systems constructed as above that are conformally invariant for special value of S. Then these special values are explicitly determined. Then as a concrete example, let's see the construction of omega-3 systems for SL3C. So in this case, the Heisenberg parabolic is a Borel subalgebra. And we denote by gamma the highest root of G. Then covariant map tau sub k is defined this way. Then each uh, one-dimensional subspace of G of negative one is an irreducible LC submodule. So we can construct differential operators from each subspace. Then for complex parameter T in C and I equals one, two, we define omega three to the T as the sum of the two third order differential operators, omega three tilde and C sub three. Then here, the point is this complex parameter T controls the conformal invariance. Then the goal is we want to show that there exist the complex parameters Ti and Si so that the omega-3 Ti of x of negative alpha i is conformally invariant over this line bundle. Then here is the theorem. Let G be SL3C and Q be the Heisenberg parabolic. Then for each i equals one, two, the operator omega-3 to the three-fourths of x of negative alpha i is conformally invariant over L sub zero. That's all my talk. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Ha, ha, ha.